Well, we are reading from the Mandukya Upanishad. This is our online study number 14 on chapter 1. We are looking at the section called Self-Enquiry that is connected with the seventh mantra. So last time we read the seventh mantra, let us just remember those precious words from that mantra. Before I go into that mantra, please uh, I want to remind us of one thing which I highlighted last time that we use the word conscious but not consciousness while translating this mantra. Therefore, we will understand that this mantra is talking about our being conscious of different states and it has con contrasted our being conscious with our consciousness. And I explained what is the meaning of this ness according to the Indian logical system. So now we go into the mantra. The meaning is like this. That is the, it is talking about the fourth pada or fourth aspect or fourth part or fourth characteristic of Atman. It said Nanta Pragna, the Atman is not conscious of the internal world. Na Bahish Pragnam, it is not conscious of the external world. Na Ubhayata Pragnam, nor it is conscious of both the worlds. This we will discuss in detail later on. Na Pragyana Ghanam, it is not also conscious of the condensed mass of deep sleep. Na Pragyam, not conscious. Na Apragyam, nor unconscious. Adrishtam, which is unseen. Avyavaharyam, beyond our empirical worldly dealings. Agrajyam, beyond the grasp of organs of action. <coughs> Alakshanam, which is not inferable. Achintyam, which is unthinkable. You can notice that I am using a, a, a everywhere. Achintyam, Alakshanam, a means not. Avyapadesyam, indescribable. Ekatma pratyaya saram, it is the valid proof of it consists in the single belief in the self. Prapancha upashamam, in which all the phenomena cease, come to an end. And shantam, which is unchanging. Shivam, auspicious. Now see, positive, positive descri description. Shantam, which is unchanging. Shivam, auspicious. And Advaitam, non-dual. Saha, Atma, that is the Self. Saha, Vignyaha, that is to be discovered. So, we gave an example there of a garland made of many flowers, many different colors of flowers. And we said that all these different separate individual flowers are strung with one thread 
and therefore they all look to be one garland and there is a truth hidden in this example so we wanted to study the different aspects of the atman being involved in the different states in and through this wonderful example this logic stands in four parts that we have seen last time so i am giving a reference to connect the, the discussion that we are going to have today so first part of that logic is that the flowers are different from each other from one another but not different or away from the thread so it is the flowers are different from each other but they are none of them is different or away from the thread the second part of the logic is that no flower is different from the thread so the flowers are different from each other but not different from the thread and no flower is different from the thread third part is each flower is different from all the flowers all other flowers and also different from the thread but not away from the thread it cannot they cannot be away from the thread because it is a garland and the fourth part of that logic and that is the most important one that the thread is not identical with any of these flowers the thread is not any flower at the same time the same thread is available in and through all of the flowers the thread is not any of the flowers therefore different from the flowers at the same time it is not away from any of the flowers that means it is available in and through all the flowers there is no flower in the garland in which you won't find this thread similarly the fourth pada the turiya the pure consciousness that is you and i is not any of the states at the same time it is not away from any of the three states it is not identical with any of the three states and at the same time it is not away from all of them <coughs> in a way turiya is not the waker or vishwa the dreamer or taijasa or the sleeper pragya at the same time you will find it in all of them that is why in a way it is the fourth three states and you discover something in all of them which is one way different from them at the same time which is available in all of them so that is why it is counted as, as fourth so we understood that logic up to this point that turiya is the fourth fourth means it is counted as fourth because we counted the three states as 1 2 3 therefore to show that turiya is not unreal like any of these three states therefore it is counted as fourth now let us look at the first three padas first three padas mean first three states plus consciousness 
each pada or quarter consists of the consciousness plus the state consciousness plus the state is called vishwa in waking state suppose we take the first pada of the atman there in the waking state we call it vishwa and the equation is same with other two padas the dream state the deep sleep state there you will see the consciousness associated with dream state is called taijasa with deep sleep state is called pragya now you see the names of the padas change they are not they don't have the same name because you cannot give them the same name as you cannot give the same name like in the the dreamer is the waker no waker is waker in the waking state dreamer is dreamer in the dream state sleeper is sleeper in the sleep state so the names of the padas change because of what because of the attributes of that state waking state attributes or features are different from sleep state attributes and features the states change their descriptions change their features change their material change but the consciousness which runs in and through all of them remains the same what was our question how do we proceed in our enquiry to discover the sturiyam that is the question we were discussing that question and we continued with that discussion today so how do we proceed in our enquiry to discover the sturiyam this fourth it is easy from a mathematical standpoint it is very easy like what is vishwa vishwa is consciousness plus or associated with the waking state this we have learned so long after beginning with the mandukya upanishad we have first studied this one vishwa and that is the prathama pada first quarter vishwa is consciousness plus the waking state take vishwa and remove its changing feature the state the attributes which are impermanent we catch hold of this vishwa this waking state consciousness or the waker and remove the state from it it because we have seen the states change so remove this changeful thing impermanent thing from this the states are nothing but name and form and utility that we have seen like the bangle is nothing but name form and utility if we remove the waking state from vishwa what remains is turiya is consciousness see the word i am using here is consciousness but when i would speak about vishwa this name then i will say that vishwa means the individual is conscious in the waking state about the waking state so conscious but here i am saying consciousness because that impermanent attribute or addition has been removed so what remains is consciousness similarly if you remove the other two states with all their attributes the like for example the sleep and dream then turiya or consciousness will remain this consciousness is therefore changeless and that what undergoes changes is impermanent and since this consciousness is changeless 
it is permanent it is turiyam it is different from all the three vishwa taijas and pragna but never to be found outside them as soon as you validate vishwa you validate vishwa together with the consciousness the turiyam like take up a bangle and remove its bangle ness that is its name form and utility what remains is gold what should you do to find out the turiya now onwards we will use the pronoun the tall unbending vertical pronoun i instead of vishwa i am the waker i i am the waker do not put the blame on anybody not on vishwa i or suppose you now remove your name form and utility in this waking world itself what remains of you then what will remain you still remain as turiyam still you remain it is like when you say i do not exist you it proves that you exist <laughs> take up your cv your introductions then do the analysis like this do the facts in my cv or curriculum vitae belong to me inside the body or do they belong to my attributes the whole cv is your attribute you were not even born with them they have been added to you you were not born with them they have been added to you you were not born with this body which you have now so they are added to you this body is added to you the body which you inherited from your parents as you were born that body no longer exists so the body now you have is added to you because the child you and the you now you are the same you cannot think that you are different that baby and you now you are not different you can never think that but you know that the body is not the same so these are added to you these are your attributes it is part of your cv 1.87 cm meter tall added you are not tall, that tall when you are born this is how things are added now i will go step by step with this logic we will go up to nine steps to reach our mantra to understand things before that is really difficult so now we say that these cv these attributes this is the first part of the logic they belong to your waking state this cv the all the certificates that you have are not valid in your sleep in your sleep state you cannot show these certificates so they belong to your waking state to your state not to you you go to sleep you go to dream but not your certificates not your car not your house not your physical body even so these things all these physical things in the waking state they belong to the state not to the inner consciousness not to the real you but the consciousness will be there in the three states so the consciousness is called turiyam 
Now let us use you in place place of Vishwa. The word you, because you are awake, you are listening to the class. So with this idea, we step into the second part of this understanding. The Upanishad now catches you red-handed. You cannot run away. You have been caught. You. You have physical features, height, weight, etc., in your waking state, right? These attributes cannot be transferred to your sleep state or to your dream state. They will remain here. But you, the same you, go to other states without these physical features, right? Then, my dear you, your attributes do not belong to you. Then, your attributes do not belong to you. When a particular state is there, the attributes are there. So, the attributes belong to the individual states, not to you. Right? Yes, it is right because this is easy to understand. And since it is right, then why do you say, I am tall? I am tall. You are not tall. That tallness belongs to the waking state. But you go to the sleep state as tall or slim. Why do you say, I am tall? Why don't you say, this body is tall. I am slim. Sri Ramakrishna used to say, this body, meaning himself. There is nothing but mother in this body, he would say. This body does not like this. That is why he used to say that. That was the practice. Because he knew that that body did not belong to him. Belong means he is not the body. Are we not free from the states? You, the consciousness, do you have doubt? Do you have doubt that you are different from the states? If you say yes, I cannot believe that I am different from the states. Okay, we accept that. The Upanishad accepts that. It may be difficult to believe that we are different from the states. Even though the logic is going that way and we are accepting it. But still if you say, I cannot believe that I am different from the states. Okay. Then let us walk together further. Together. Further. And if you say, no, I accept that I am different from the states. That is well and good. That is very okay. Then also let us walk together. Let us walk further. We have not finished our journey. Even if you have doubt, let us walk together. Even if you don't have doubt, still let us walk together. Then we step into the third phase of our understanding. self analysis. The Upanishad now continues. The suggestion is that consciousness is common to all the states. That means you are present in all the three states. You are in the waking state. The same you are in the dream state. And then the same you are again present in the deep sleep state. Do you accept it or not? You cannot say that when your waking state is gone, your consciousness is gone and you are gone. So you have to accept it. Then there is no doubt that the same you are available in all the three states. Right? 
it is your dream it is your sleep it is your waking experience you are the same if you deny it then there will be real problem for you you will believe in your own non existence you will say i do not exist which is laughable now take a step further we enter into this fourth level of understanding consciousness is not the attribute of any state that we have said because your waking body and its abilities to experience the world in the waking state and also your sleep body and its experiences are missing in your dream state your waking state your waking body your sleep state and your sleep body they are missing in your dream state similarly your dream body etc and also your waking state so your dream and waking are missing in your deep sleep state so each state is a negation of other two states there are three points a b c standing at one point you can negate the existence of two others like standing at point a you can say b and c do not exist standing at b you can say a and c do not exist standing at c point you can say a and b do not exist then the truth is all these three states are equally non existent but you who prove the non existence of the states continue to be the same experiencer of all these three states right yes right please do not say no now we step into the fifth logical realm now let us analyze one step further suppose i ask a question what is my real nature who am i i am that which did not change any time in my life then all the changes that are experienced by me are not me so my real nature is unchanging it is always there with me my fatness leanness my sadness my anger my hatred my jealousy all these things are not there always with me a fat person can be a lean person a lean person can be a fat person sad man can be a happy person so therefore they are not always there the same with me they come and go so they are not my real nature then we enter into this sixth realm then what is thuriyam that question we may ask please remember thuriyam means fourth thuriyam this word means fourth we have discussed a number that is indicative of consciousness which is you how do i become thuriyam the fourth now let us analyze what is vishwa vishwa means you which means consciousness associated with attributes in the waking state and we have seen that the attributes are changeful and i am changeless you are changeless when vishwa knows that it is associated with the waking state which means when you know that you are not the state 
that the, then the same you are Turiyam. In the waking state, listening to the Mandukya Upanishad class, when you realize that you are not the state, then and there itself you are Turiyam, you are consciousness, pure consciousness. You don't have to go anywhere. So, I will just give you a practical example or practical advice. When you have time, please make yourself peaceful and start with this process of self-analysis. Just start thinking, understanding or reflecting this way. I am not the body because the body belongs to me. When the body continues to change with the passing of each year or each moment, I do not change. Just think. The body changes. I do not change. I am not the mind because the mind changes from a sad mind to a happy mind to a passive mind to an angry mind to a peaceful mind and so on and so forth. The mind is changeful but I am the observer of this changeful mind, dancing mind. Similarly, I am not the intellect. I am not the ego, I and so on. I am the observer of these changing objects. I who am the subject. I am the observer. So just go on like that. Thinking, understanding, contemplating on these just steps. And suddenly at one point you will see that you are left with only yourself. It is just you and you. This is called consciousness. It is the never changing you. And then you discover a bit of yourself who you really are. But it does not continue for long. It breaks. You try again. Continue to practice this, this way more and more. Then you will have more conviction about your own self. Now let us follow the Upanishad. That will be the seventh step. There is a deep-rooted belief that we have to go to Samadhi to remove the attributes from us. Like I have to go to Samadhi to remove the attributes from us. To know that I am consciousness. First thing is that the attributes belong to the states. We have said States means the attributes. Then it is easy to remove the attributes of one state by shifting us from one state to another state. Then it is easy to remove the attributes. Samadhi is also a state, Samadhi state. It is therefore not possible to remove our attributes by shifting between the states. Clear? So when I go to Samadhi, I do not remove my attributes because Samadhi state has attributes. So now we will listen to Vedanta. What Vedanta has to say about this? This is a very, very, very important thing in our self-analysis. When I say that I have to remove the attributes, I am horribly wrong. Suppose my cloth has become dirty because it has taken the dirt on it. 
since it has taken the dirt on it the dirt can be removed but i have never taken the attributes as part of me they are not taken now listen what vedanta says they are not taken these attributes are not taken but they are mistaken this sentence will control everything whatever we say afterwards these attributes are not taken but they are mistaken please remember this sentence then we will do the analysis in depth we have to convince us we are not convincing anybody else we are trying to convince us i have to convince myself that i am a human being i have to convince myself that i am consciousness i am changeless and this is a hard task this is the experience of vedanta this is a very hard task the upanishad says that the consciousness aturiyam is unattached asangah it is like a crystal like a marble stone or like a mirror so clear crystal clear since consciousness is unattached no attributes can be taken by consciousness aturiyam asanga nothing can stick to it it is an error in the mind that thinks that it has attributes i need not do anything to remove the dirt the dirt cannot get attached to the aturiyam because it is asanga nothing can get attached to it shri ramakrishna gives the example of the mud fish we discussed the other day it remains in the mud but the mud cannot get attached to it there is a mirror you stand before the mirror it will you will see your face but when you go away your face is not sticking to the mirror the equation stands like this with mistaken attributes the turiyam is called vishwa which is an error and without the mistaken attributes that means without the error the vishwa is pure turiyam and consciousness you are pure consciousness therefore as vishwa i am turiyam as taijasa i am turiyam as pragnya i am turiyam even when i am in samadhi i am turiyam i am consciousness i am the fourth the example of what we gave suppose your cloth has fallen on a dirty floor then the cloth has become dirty that means the dirt on the floor has been transferred to the cloth this is a real transfer then there is meaning in removing the dirt the cloth has taken the dirt hence the dirt has to be removed but suppose you place a red flower on a crystal clear marble floor or on a crystal floor floor made of crystal or a crystal slab put a red flower on the crystal the crystal will look red it will be called a red crystal right but do you think that the crystal has really become red no because it was not a real transfer of the red color of the red flower to the colorless crystal asanga atma colorless crystal hence you need not remove the red flower the crystal may appear to be red may appear to be red but in reality the crystal is as colorless as 
ever even when you see it looks red the red crystal is an error a mistake in the mind in like manner if the turiyam has really become vishwa then to become turiyam you have to go to the turiya state or the samadhi state but that is not the fact actually speaking when you say that turiyam has become vishwa this is an error turiyam is always the same and its vishwaness is individuality is a mistake which can be corrected where in the mind mistake happens in the mind since it is an intellectual problem this solution should also be an intellectual solution now let us go back to our example how to make the red crystal a colorless crystal remember we have three things here the original colorless crystal the red flower and the red crystal the crystal is reflecting on the a uh, red flower is reflecting on the crystal so that portion of the crystal is red now the question is how to make the crystal pure and clear again ah there, there is an easy answer remove the red flower then you have cleaned the crystal it is as simple an act as that how to remove the red color from the colorless crystal remove the red flower it is as simple as that no that is a grave mistake we have to understand this this is a grave mistake remove the flower the flower need not be removed cannot be removed it is not that easy you cannot remove your body from yourself you cannot remove your mind from yourself the flower need not be removed even with the flower the crystal is always colorless even with the red color flower then why does it appear to be red yes this is the answer it appears to be red but actually the crystal has not taken this color has not changed has not taken this color the redness of the crystal is in the appearance in the thought then what to do here is the test since the appearance is in the thought in the mind just remove the mistaken thought now you can see the truth here just hiding behind the mistake let me share with you a personal experience of mine We went to the top of the Canadian National Tower in Toronto. We were a few adults, and there were some, were some kids with us. Very small kids, two year old, one and a half year old. On that height, they have a restaurant, and there is a place on the floor of that platform, which had very thick transparent glasses. the glasses were obviously set into the channels of steel frames one can see through the glasses the foot of the tower below so high it was one can also walk on the glasses it is meant for that now we saw that the kids were jumping on the glasses and sometimes lying there and looking at the ground below but 
it was difficult for the adults the grown ups to even step on the glasses the mind knows that it is a secure platform still it cannot find that confidence to walk on the glass we know that the crystal is always clear and pure we also see that there is a red flower which is reflected on the crystal we also see that the crystal looks red the truth is that the crystal can never become red that also we know now the test is try to see the clear or pure crystal in and through the red crystal with your mind's eyes just can you separate this like that you are standing in front of the mirror your face is reflected on the mirror so there this mirror has your face try to imagine the mirror without your face even when you are seeing the reflection you cannot remove the color of the crystal because it is not a real transfer you you are not allowed to remove the flower because then the whole whole thing becomes problematic you don't exist then so it is a mistake you know that red crystal is a mistake even though you are seeing the red crystal you will have to know that the crystal is colorless you have to know that the crystal is colorless accept that this crystal is colorless logically you may but can you think of that crystal which is colorless in and through this red crystal and that is the way to make the crystal clear so it will be easy to see the clear crystal now it is difficult right this is called a wonder or maya in the similar manner my dear vishwa try to see the consciousness free from the attributes of the states in you even when you are in the waking state you have all your cvs height age everything this is the only practice that you remove the mistake mistake and thought from your mind similarly to reach the turiyam we think that we have to remove the states that means an engagement with the thoughts the states as long as we are engaged with the states we remain one with the three the vishwa the tejasa the pragna vedanta says that to become turiyam you need not eliminate your body you need not eliminate your mind you need not eliminate your intellect you are as you are but you make a change inside you need not eliminate your waking state you will remain a vishwa just like to get the colorless crystal you need not eliminate the flower all of these should be there then what should we do remove the mistake from your mind that the crystal has become red like again when you are watching a movie it is one step easier when you are watching a movie you see that there is torrential rain in the movie remove the mistake that it is really raining in the movie theater or hall know that this rain does not wet anything it does not wet the movie screen 
even even when you see that it is raining why do we call it rain because it is rain because it is making things wet in the movie because it is making things wet in the movie it is called rain people who you see are walking in the rain are getting drenched in the movie this is called your state now do you understand all is happening in your state in the movie which should not affect you let us go a bit further you will be caught there you get involved in it even though it does not affect you by itself it affects your mind you my dear vishwa you need to firmly establish the thought that you are separate from your state you need to know or remove the mistake that you are vishwa you are turiya even when you appear to be vishwa in the waking state even as it is raining in the movie you don't have to go out of the movie hall you don't have to bring an umbrella to save you from rain be at your place be in the movie theater and enjoy the movie knowing that it is a mistake to think that it will affect you this rain will wet you this is what is called a state you are included in that state but you have to know that it won't affect you because what you are experiencing will change is changeful this is what is called mithya or maya this understanding alone this recognition alone is called knowing that you are pure consciousness this is called self consciousness when the red flower comes i seem to be a red crystal when the green flower comes i seem to be a green crystal when the blue flowers come i seem to be a blue crystal i seem to be a crystal which is constantly changing colors but i am the ever unchanging pure consciousness pure crystal suppose the anger thought comes i become angry desire thought comes i become desirous i should know that these angers desires etc belong to the states the rain belongs to the state and the rain drenches the people in the state the fire burns things in the state what is a state it is a state to which we associate ourselves it is an experience to which we associate ourselves like as we have seen in the movie theater you are there in the hall but you are not there for the whole life so you are different from that hall what is that hall it is a state of yours when you are in the hall watching the movie in darkness in ignorance it is ignorance it is a mistake to think that you belong to the whole hall with all its ambience in yoga you are needed needed to remove the thoughts but in vedanta you are required to rectify the mistake in your thought thought may remain body may remain everything may remain but you have to rectify the mistake is mistake a thing an identity entity no it is a state 
it is the whole movie hall together with you and the movie going on there raining fire happening because because you are there your participation creates your state your participation with the mistake creates your state you are pure consciousness without getting affected by any of the states so we have three examples to analyze movie theater crystal and flower and vishwa and thuriam so start with movie theater it is easy to understand what a state is it is easy to separate you from your state then start with the colorful crystal bit difficult then still more difficult is understanding that you are pure consciousness even when you are in the waking state and you are called vishwa still you are pure consciousness and when we know that then the whole state with all its attributes will become a mistake you will be free that is what is called freedom in this very life as you are with all your cv name everything so we will stop here today a bit more we have to go with this understanding then we will directly take up the mantra so we have come to the end of our time thank you very much for being with us